I am so excited to do this video because we got a new jig in the house from Woodpeckers. It's the Route in Plain Small Board Mill. Whoo, that's a mouthful. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna step Big D through putting it together with all these pieces and parts, okay? But also how to use it and some great tips and tricks that I've learned but all the different applications for it. So man, grab a cup of coffee and get ready. Sis, what's all this? <laughs> okay, so we just got into the Sedge Tool shop, the Route and Plain bench top board mill okay. from Woodpeckers. Nice. And I took it all apart. This is how it comes. Chris, get in here and show this. Okay, I just took it all apart because when I s assembled this earlier this week, Put it together in about five minutes, and I'm going to step you through it, and I'll show you how easy it is to put together. I don't want people to get um, over or overanalyze it that there's so many things and moving parts. It's so easy, and this is a brilliant design. Awesome. So in this video, it's three steps. All right. Okay. I'm, we're going to put it together first. Okay. Then I'm going to show you how to use it. Oh. Align it. <laughs> set it up perfect. Right. Okay. And then I'm gonna show you some different applications that we can use it for in this shop. I'm Sounds so good. excited. <laughs> Let's go. All right, Sid, so where do I put this? Okay, so on the side here, we have all these holes, mm -hmm. all right? When we put it back on these two holes, and when we put the, the fence on here, what happens is because you have to choose it to the router you're using. Oh, okay. In other words, you'll see as we get going with this, you don't want to plunge into your butcher block or board you're flattening. You want it to be forward of this fence when the ultra shear bit is in there. Okay. It may sound confusing, but you'll see it as we set it up. So, so what we want to do is we want to take these screws and bring them up to forward of this and we still get plenty of room for our project. Sounds good. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna mention is you see right here, Big D, when you're screwing that in, mm -hmm. make sure it's perfectly even because this gets a little cocked like this. Okay. So set it flush on the ground and then tighten it up. Got it. So this is a MDF fence that comes with it. Okay. And it'll slip in here and we'll, we'll uh, use these two screws to put it on. But what's really nice is Woodpeckers does everything right. They already pre-tapped it for us. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, Seth, what's next? Okay, we need to take the router and put it and adjust it and capture it. Okay. This is the best part about the routing plane. Okay, I have a Festival of 1010 here and it's got two milled flats. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I put it on here and see how this just comes in, it captures oh. it so we can go back and forth with it. Nice. Now, we have to find a way to center it. Aha! <laughs> Woodpecker supplies this. I got a quarter inch collet on here, and this is a quarter inch abashaft, shaft, and that'll help us center it right in there. Look how perfect that is. Oh, nice. Okay, so we're just gonna chuck this up and center it. And then I put it right about there, just below the base. Okay. Okay, so as we bring it in, you see how there's, like I said, there's two mil flats. Mm -hmm. I'll show you a couple other routers I have. This works with any router. It's just, you know, we have Festool routers in here. But uh, this is plate A. Okay. And if you have only one milled flat on your router, that's the one you have to make sure that that is nice and stout first. You lock it in like this. Okay, it's just real simple. Okay. Okay, and then if this pot was round, then you would bring this in, but that's a milled flat too. And okay. it's perfectly centered on the routing plane. Perfect. All right, Sedge, what's next? All right, I will, or we will, do an entire video on this bit. This doesn't come with the routing plane. Okay. But this is the ultra shear bit, spoil board bit. This is a one inch, 25 millimeter. It's three cutters. Oh. Okay, there's actually a shear angle this way. So you're gonna get such a good cut when we're routing the end grain of this butcher board I glued up. Right. The nice thing is the one inch is eight millimeter shank. Okay. And that may make sense to you because all the Festool routers we have in the shop 
all have an eight millimeter collet. Mm -hmm. It's also available in a quarter inch and half inch. Oh, okay. This is the one I have. There's also one available three quarter. There's one available inch and a half and one two inch. So when we use the 2200, I don't have those bits, but the, I'd probably use that two inch and that's a big bit, half inch shanks. Okay. Okay, so you always got to look at that when you're choosing the router you're going to use. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to chuck this up now and we'll get going. That They include, a, with every bit, they include a sixteenth hex. So there's four edges to that carbide insert. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you look and do the math on it, it's very inexpensive bit because it's basically four router bits in one. That's a good way to think about it. Okay, so before we set the ski supports on there, okay. what we're going to do is there's a, several ways you can anchor this so it doesn't move as we're routing it because we're going to move the sled over it. Okay. Okay, so these are supplied from woodpeckers. Okay, and they're really cool. When I say they're really cool, they're super simple. We are going to use this later on in the video to clamp some awkward pieces we have. But you see how that works? And you take it like this, you bring it in, lock it down, and it's angled so it grips it. You do one or two more on this side, works great. Awesome. But because it's a small piece, we'll use this instead because it's a, these are the clamping elements. I'm going to bring it right in here like this. Look how easy that is, the dog's there, and this is an eccentric cam, and we're ready to start routing. Awesome. All right, Sage, so how thick is this board? Well, let's measure it real quick. I'll take it out. It's 40 millimeters. So that's basically an inch and a half. Okay. What will, the, spe um, the minimum you could go is about 20 millimeters, three quarters, a little over three quarters, and the maximum thickness is three inches. Oh, so this covers the gamut on it. But what we need to do is we need to put these on, <clears throat> which I call the skis. So see how I've put this here? Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we'll take this and right here, Chris, get this. You see these two tabs? That's what goes in these slots. Mm -hmm. And these here will go into with these two pieces here. But what I want to do is I want to get it close to level. Okay. Or I put it on the piece, and then I just lock it in. Big D, I'll have you do that one over there. Gotcha. Wicked easy. Okay, Big D, really quick on this one. I always do a final check to see how our skis look here. We're looking good. Look how big a butcher block we could have done here, oh, cutting yeah. board. All right, now, I am gonna go back and forth to see if there's any hiccups, none. Now this is our initial route with it, so you're gonna, and this is why we did the brackets forward. Anybody's router is gonna be different, but Chris, I wanna make sure you can come in here, right on this side. See this? You want to start forward of that MDF fence. Oh. Okay, you don't want to start here and plunge in. Gotcha. You want to start here and go forward. That's why we moved it up like that. Makes sense. We have one more measurement, and that is depth. Okay. Okay, we're going to keep it wicked easy. Uh, the instructions on the route and plane says to take very light cuts between a sixteenth and an eighth. Okay. Okay. You know my brain, it's metric, right? So I was doing some calculations. I'm gonna do one millimeter passes. Okay. Now, on this butcher block, okay, we're, it's, it's pretty even, and you can actually do something like this to see how much you wanna take down. Look at that. I don't even think I need to take down a millimeter. I could go with a 0.5 millimeter. Okay. The lighter the pass, the less tear out you have. Hey, all right. So let's not use the scale. Let's zero out the router for our depth. I'm gonna take it, take that ultra shear bit, and put it right down and lock it in, okay? okay? I'm gonna take my turret, make sure it's at the last stop. I'm gonna make sure that this is loose. If I needed to use a scale, it's right there. And if I wanna do a micro pass, I bring it to zero. So now it's zeroed out. You know what? Let's try that half a millimeter pass okay. and see what happens. And there you go. Okay, so we get it set at a half a millimeter of depth. We don't have a lot to take down. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to initially cut that MDF board, 
Okay, and you'll see why that's gonna be really easy for moving it down the board. And we'll get some good shots of that. But let's talk about a little bit about safety. Okay. When we turn it on, I'm gonna, it's always going to be all the way back. And there's a stop here. And Chris came in here and get this. There's a stop here. Okay, when you do the next cut, basically we're gonna do this big D, go like this. Then we're gonna move it over. Then we're gonna come back and plunge forward of that board and okay. then go forward. This isn't a race. We'll just take it nice and easy. Okay. This is the one inch ultra shear bit. So what I like to do, as soon as I get over three quarter, I drop it down from the six speed to like five. Okay. okay, and I'll do the first one. We'll take a look at what happened and then we'll just go down the board. Sounds good. All right. Okay, let's look at the cut. Okay. I'm gonna take it out to look. Oh my God, is that nice, look at that. Boy, is that smooth. Of course, you're gonna get a little tear out there. Sure. But you see how we've created this, mm -hmm. okay? This is what I'm gonna do and take it like this for my next pass and make my route. So this will go very quick. Okay. Okay, so I'll just take it like this and you'll see, and hopefully we can get the action on here where I can do two passes. So big D, let's check it out. <laughs> okay. Woo, that wasn't too bad. Nah. All too right. Bad. Not too long. So if we pull it back and we look, feel how even that is. Oh wow. And now just we'll hit it with a Rotex and do final sanding. And that just eliminated a ton of time. Hey, let's explore some more applications with it. So this is a fantastic application for the routing plane. We're under the 15 inches. But this was an offcut of a slab I had, mm -hmm. okay? And you can't feed this through a planer like this because it would just tear it up. But look at the spalting in here. Look at all this wacky grain. So we're gonna be going this way with it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop it here. I wanna put my routing plane up against here, okay? But it's gonna move and the clamps or the hold down supplied, I have all this wacky uh, live edge here. The best application here is to use some double-sided tape to stick it to the surface. Okay. So big D, I just did a couple of passes yeah. on this uh, spalted maple. You can see where we set it for a tenth of a millimeter up here, but look back here, okay, I had to go a little bit deeper with it. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're flattening this and it's just skimming here. So back and forth, a couple passes. You see it works with the OF 1400 because this has the double flats on it. It's wicked smooth, but feel that surface with that ultra shear bit. Oh wow. It's absolutely amazing. So the other part I'm gonna bring over here so we can see it again. I know I'm a little repetitive on this, but what's nice is you can keep the router going, and because we have this area that's cut out, it's an easy alignment. Yep. So it's, it, it, you can keep the router going back and forth. This is the one inch ultra shear. With the 1400, I'd probably go up to the inch and a half if I oh, okay. had it, okay? And when we use the 2200 in the next application, you'll see that that'll take a two inch ultra shear. Oh but we're still gonna use the one we have okay. because that's an eight millimeter shank which fits all the Festool routers. Good call.
you're going to see that the board has a slight cup here, so that's how we'll work that as we go down toward the end. Okay. You can also see how, boy, is that smooth and flat. And this was kind of ramped. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to have a perfect level on this. Uh, a couple of tips and tricks that I'll mention. Make sure that your area is kept clean. Now, someone may be watching the video saying, oh, look at all the dust. Hello, we're taking a lot of the dust into the dust extractor. Mm -hmm. So if this gets frustrating uh, and gets caught maybe on this stop here, what I'll suggest is wrap it up like this. I'm going to bring it down and make another pass. Okay. And let's see how we're going to do. Okay, Big D, another great application for what? The router plane. I want to establish a really flat surface to put this through my planer. But I got two highs here, right? There's a little bit of what? Twist. Mm -hmm. So if I feed that through the planer, the roller is going to grab that. It'll be a beautiful surface, but it'll still have the twist. So let's get the twist out. Okay. So what we want to do, we have it locked down to the MFT. And if I start with a routing plane, I still have that wobble. So what I'd like to do, this won't be in the way because my outer ski will be here. I'm going to tuck that in here and I'm going to come off to the side here and tuck another shim in and we'll be good to go. Hey Serge, I don't think this works with the 22. What do you mean? Um... Okay, wait a minute. There's the flat. Like I said, it goes yep. against the plate A. Put the flat there. Yep. Okay, you got the centering mantle in there. I sure do. <sighs> Uh-oh, here we go. That's why there's an extra set of screws oh. here. And that allow the larger routers out there to work. And this will self-center in there with the centering mandrel. Let's get her done. Yes, sir. Big D, come here. And let's just move this off. That was the first pass, but remember where the high was? Mm -hmm. And you know how we shimmed it? Yep. So what we'll do is we'll go back and forth on this and we'll level this. So this will go down on the bed of the planer and we'll make it super, super flat and faced. Nice. Hey, go ahead and grab that and take it off. Okay. Okay. Let's see how we're progressing on this. Look at that, huh? Wow. Look how dead flat that is. And that was our low point. That was our high point. So when we get to the end, it'll basically be a little reversed here. Mm -hmm. And then we'll test it and send it through the, put this down side to the planer and be ready. I'll tell you what, this is going to be a great addition to the Sedge Tool Shop. All right, Sedge, what do you think? I think we have a new permanent fixture in the Sedge Tool Shop. Um, I was really impressed on how it went together, wicked quick, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think we covered a few good applications. Review this video uh, when you're setting up your route and plane. I just want to point out one more feature that people don't know if you couple it with uh, one of the Festool routers, and this may uh, have another application for you. You know how we use the centering mandrel here to mm -hmm. center it? That is the center line that's right on for the router bit, any router bit you put in there. So this may become a small joinery machine and it eliminates a lot of jigs that I have made in my shop over the years. Okay. So as we always say, be positive. Stay sharp. Wicked, Wicked sharp. sharp.